A lot of preppers right now are relying on data they're collecting from flight tracker services. And that's where you can get a lot of good intelligence based on where air traffic is currently. But there are some things you should know about these flight trackers and what they do reveal and what they keep hidden. So in order to get the best data possible, in order to use the intel to your advantage when it comes to strategically preparing for whatever emergency crisis it is you're preparing for, you have to understand how these programs work and what your expectations should be. So I wanted to make this video to kind of give everybody some clarity in regards to all of this flight tracking that's been going on, especially since the beginning of the conflict overseas, okay? So, first off and foremost, I live in North Dakota, very nearby Minot Air Force Base. And honestly, not today, but generally I have very clear skies and you can see quite a bit. And there is air traffic all over my property constantly, whether or not it's jets or helicopters in our area or whatever it is, there's vapor trails all over the sky above my home 24 seven. And at the end of the day, none of that is represented on flight trackers, not even the commercial aircraft. So you have to understand that the information we're being given is only what we're allowed to receive. And if you look down in places like Alabama, where you have Maxwell Air Force Base and you have Sumter Smith Air National Guard, you'll see a lot of helicopter activity, a lot of flight activity in general. But if you go look at Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, very close to where I live, you will not see any traffic hardly at all. You'll barely see any commercial traffic and you definitely won't see any military traffic. So why is that? Well, here's the thing. Keep this in mind when you're using this data to prepare because it is important for you to understand the limitations of what the data can present you with. All right, so radar and transponders are still the primary tracking methods for aircraft, which is great because obviously radar has been working for a very long time and then transponders send out a signal that is received by air traffic control, which is then put into the database. Well, recently, ADSB or Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast was introduced, which is a satellite-based tracking that broadcasts a unencrypted form of data through the 1090 megahertz frequency, which is able to then be received by people in the commercial market and by private citizens. It's able to be received because it's not encrypted. So as long as you have a receiver that can receive the 1090 megahertz frequency, you can also get this data, okay? And it's becoming extremely widespread to the point where all commercial flights in the United States as well as Europe are demanding that this be a capability that these aircraft have. So that transition is occurring rapidly and is generally covering most of the aircraft you see in the air, especially on these flight trackers. Now, Air traffic control, which is also known as ATC, uses radar, which, you know, just like in the movies, is the circular thing that pings things and then sends back the data based on their location. And then the transponders, they use more because they provide more information. And what the transponders do is that they send out a signal that basically pings the aircraft and then the aircraft sends back the data that gives them the identifier, the flight, and the altitude data. So there's a lot more data that these transponders get, which is why everything is switching over to the ADS-B. And there's also MLAT, which is multilateration, and that's used in order to calculate data from several different receivers to try to track the position of aircraft that don't have ADS-B transponders yet. So basically, these flight trackers are giving you as much data as they possibly can. Now here's the issue, and this is what you really need to keep in mind when it comes to using this information to try to make predictions or to strategize for your future planning preparations or whatever it is based on the heightened threat level that we're currently existing in, right? Private or sensitive aircraft can request that tracking is not displayed or restricted. And you'll see that when you use these flight trackers, which I'll put a link below to one of the flight trackers so you guys can kind of check that in case you're not aware of this information at all. And for those of you who are very aware of this stuff, you already get it. But basically they can say you can't track us at all or you can track us, but you can't put out any of our data. So you'll see flights on these trackers where there is no identifier, there's no altitude, there's no data listed at all. You just know that there's an aircraft in the area, okay? And the other thing to keep in mind is that I'm not trying to say anything negative about anyone else on YouTube or anybody who follows these things. I think there's good data on here. I just want to make everyone aware of the limitations of that data. And I do talk to NY Prepper quite a bit, Greg over there, who gave me some of this information as well. And I think that he puts out some good info. But I also wanted to make sure that everybody had the meat and potatoes as to how these things work before they go running to it with um, running to the bank with it, right? Now. The military is what everyone wants to track, right? Because everybody sees all these military jetliners and all these military tranker, uh, tankers and everything else up in the sky, and they're wondering what's happening, the doomsday planes, right? Well, understand that 
yes, sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. So if you see a refueling tanker, there's a good chance that there's other types of aircraft around it that aren't sending out a signal. So you're not seeing those aircraft, but you might be expecting the idea that they exist there because there's not really a good reason for a in-air refueling tanker to exist in that area otherwise. It's North Dakota, it just gets really windy. You know, I wanted to prove that I'm actually out here. Like, not a green screen, right? <laughs> All right, now the other thing to keep in mind is that the military may use IFF, which is Identify Friend or Foe Secure Systems that don't send ADSB information. And they stay away from commercial airspace, which means that these commercial airliners might not be aware of their existence in their area, but they will uh, be avoided because the uh, military is making sure they're not gonna you know, have a collision or something along those lines. So. Basically, the thing you really have to consider is that if the military wants you to see what they're doing, you will see it. And if they don't want you to see what they're doing, you won't see it. And the other thing you always have to keep in mind when it comes to this type of information, especially right now in the fog of war and everything else that's happening around the world, is that you have to question why they're letting you see some things and not others. Because sometimes letting you see things can be used just as much against your ability to properly plan as not allowing you to see things. So I just wanted to bring all this information out there and just let you guys know what your expectations should be and what all of this means when it comes to how these flights are being tracked and what's happening out there. Of course, there's way more detail and way more technological you know, stuff we could talk about here. But at the end of the day, I was trying to keep it simple and just give you some good valid points that make sense and then using these points to give you the idea that you're not seeing everything that's being or that's happening right now, okay? So hopefully this gave you some good information. If you need anything else from me at all, go to magicprepper.com and that is gonna be it for Magic Prepper.